So it's been a little while since I uploaded an Android setup guide, but I'm going to be doing a retro watch today. So if you've not checked out my other Android emulator setup guides, check those out in my playlists. But today we're looking at RetroWatch. So what RetroWatch is, it's kind of like a multi-purpose emulator and it pretty much caters for, I'd probably say around 100 plus systems. And what we're going to do through RetroWatch for this tutorial is get you running with this and loading up your first game, downloading a core to make that game play. And we're going to go through some video settings as well. So check this one out. <laughs> Okay, so if you like what you see in this setup guide today, be sure to hit notification, subscribe, and also like it gets you up-to-date retro emulation content that I upload daily pretty much. So we're looking at RetroArch. So the very thought of RetroArch to a lot of people was pretty daunting. Uh, there's lots of files to look at, lots of text, but I'm gonna get you through this in the easiest possible way. And for this basic setup guide, I'm going to be using a NES core and loading up a NES game. So just head over to the Google Play Store and you're going to see free retro watches. So as we can see, we got retro watch, retro watch plus and retro arch pro. So the one I'm going to be downloading and using for this setup guide is the top one just here, which is retro arch libretro. So just click on this one. And this is going to give you a brief bit of detail what Retro Arch is. And surprisingly, on Android devices, it's a really nice setup. So let's download this and just press install. So just to also let you know that RetroArch is completely free. There's no hidden costs in there to buy anything. So everything's self-contained. It's a really nice program. And I've done many setup guides using this RetroArch system on Windows 2 as well as incorporating it into other systems such as RetroBat. So once we downloaded and installed RetroArch, we're just gonna go and press play on this one. And it needs access to read external storage. And so what it's saying is it needs access to our file so it can access our game. So just press OK on this. And also allow it access for photos, videos, music. Just allow this. Okie doke. So it's extracted in the base. And this is just a initial setup. You're not going to see this every time. So what we need to do first is download a core. Like I said, I'm going to be doing Nintendo NES for this quick setup, guys. If we go to online updater and core downloader, this is a long list here. This is a long list of all the systems that RetroArch supports on Android. So it might be a little bit different if you're used to using RetroArch on Windows PC or Linux. Uh, different versions of RetroArch has more cores or less cores uh, depending on which version of it you download. So like I say, take a little look at what this can do on Android. But we're looking for Nintendo NES, and the one core I'm going to be using is NES Topia UE. So a quick rundown of what a core is. It's kind of like an emulator, but a very small type of core, as it were. And that's what RetroArch refers to these as their cores, not emulators. And these power our games in RetroArch. So just press on the Nintendo NES, Famicom NES Topia UE. And this is now installing that core. So literally these are a few kilobytes in size, they're not very big. So next thing I'm gonna do is actually go back on this and go back again. And what I'm gonna do this time is actually load this game, which I've got using that core, which I've just downloaded. So I'm gonna to go to load content. And from here, once we're load content, you need to find where your game is stored on your Android device. So I'm gonna just check mine and find my game. Okay, so I found my game and that's in a zip file extension and NES games on RetroWatch work fine with .zip file extensions. So I'm just gonna quickly press on that and I'm gonna go to load archive.
loops out of that, I'll just press on the bottom right hand side. You'll see a little Retro March Space Invader logo. If you press on that, that will bring you into the quick menu, as you can see now. And all we can do is just close content for now. And what I'm going to do next is show you how to import your game. So rather than going through that process each time of locating your game, we can actually load this into almost like a playlist or retro watch. So what we're going to do is just press on the three horizontal lines on the side just there. And what we're going to do is just press on import content. So once I'm in import content, I'm going to go to scan file. And then it's just a case of locating your game. So in my case, it's going to be in download. And once you've found your game, just press on it. And it will say scan the file finished. And once that's finished scanning, what we're going to do is just hit the three horizontal lines on the side. And that's going to bring us into playlists. And if you scroll right to the bottom, you can now see Nintendo Entertainment System up here. And here's our game. And RetroWatch has been kind enough to get some cover art for us. If we click on this, just scroll down to set core association and just make sure it's set to this Nestopia one. If you've downloaded several cores, then under here, under this section, you'll see several cores. So always set this to run from your NES core. Otherwise, you'll go through the process of keep having to pick which core to use. And Nestopia is a very good system to use for this. So what we're going to do next is run the game. So again, on the right hand bottom side, you'll see the RetroWatch logo. And once we're in quick menu like we are just now, we got save state and load state. So let me show you how this works. If I save this state, or rather save this game from where I am right now, if I just press save state. And just hit on the RetroArch logo again at the bottom right. And what I'm going to do is press on Load State. And that's going to take us back to where we saved it, which is the start of Mario Brothers 2. Now, under Quick Menu, if you just scroll down, you'll find Options. And in Options, we can play with video settings. So, for example, if we go to Palette just here, we can choose a different range of colors of palette. So, if I put this onto RGB and go back into the game, the colors will slightly change. And then obviously if we go to PAL, uh, PAL colors are going to be different from something like NTSC and things like that. So that's worth experimenting with. And if we come out of palette, under preferred aspect ratio, this is set to auto currently. So what we can do is actually change the aspect ratio from PAL to NTSC. And obviously, Power and NTSC Nintendo NES consoles was different in terms of speed and video size too. So if I go back in the preferred aspect ratio and just put this on 4x3, which is the era of Nintendo NES, any 8-bit game system was really designed for 4x3 images. And for those of you wanting to play a little bit of Duck Hunt, if we go down to Zapper device we can actually change this over. So if you fancy playing some Duck Hunt on your Android device, just select one of these options. Now, say for example, you've got a Japanese Nintendo game and it won't boot up by default settings. If you scroll down to system region, you can change this over to a different region. So for a Japanese game, it's gonna be Famicom, I believe. And if we back out of here again, and under quick menu, we can even change the way the controls look on the screen. So if we go down to on screen overlay and just scroll down a little bit further. Overlay opacity is currently set to 70 or 0.70. So obviously the less you put on this, the less you're going to see of the buttons on your screen. If we put this up to 1.00. That's going to make the buttons look a bit more clear rather than being so faded if that's what you want. And also under overlay preset, if we go here and put this one onto retro pad clear, this is going to change the way the buttons look on our screen. So let's back out and check all this out. So quit menu and press on the game and resume. <laughs> So 
So I'm going to quickly change over the style with the buttons there, which you can see. So if I scroll back down to on-screen overlay and right at the bottom, we got overlay preset. So if I put this one back onto the default, which is Neo Retro Pad, let's go back into the game. So always remember that bottom button, which you can see of the little Space Invader, that's the button to press to bring you into the quick menu where you can do all this. And if we just press on the blog NTSC filter, we can change colors, that type of thing here, or rather apply filters. So for example, if I press on monochrome and come back out and out again, resume. And say you've got a very long intro on a game you can't skip, there's a really easy way around this. On the bottom left of the screen, you'll see a little fast forward button. Let me show you what I mean. If we go to quick menu and start the game and resume. And that's your fast forward button to bypass all those annoying long introductions which you can't skip. But just remember, Close content to take you back to the main menu and quit the game, obviously. And if you press the home button just here, what I do recommend you doing is saving all your progress. So what I recommend you doing is just going into configuration file and save current configuration. And the reason I say to do this is because you don't want to mess around with all these settings to find in a few hours time, you're going to load it back up and nothing's saved. So just on the error caution, just make sure to save all your configurations that you make. And the last thing I am going to say with this is under main menu, if you go to online updater, every now and again when you're using RetroArch, it's always useful to update core info files, update assets, update databases. So just keep RetroArch up to date. So that's it for my Android RetroArch setup guide today. So I've gone through quite a few settings there, and there's probably a lot to digest. Uh, RetroArch can be pretty daunting when you're using it for the first time. There's too much on there and not enough visuals going on. That's the problem with RetroArch. But once you get this sorted out and you realize what it can do, it's a really great system to use, even on Android devices like I've just shown you. And another good thing with running this on Android is that you can actually connect Bluetooth controllers with this or even connect a wired one if you've got the right connections in your Android device. So like I said at the start of the video, if you enjoyed this video today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content which I upload every day. And also be sure to join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And if there's a specific guide you want me to do, which I've not yet covered, it doesn't matter if it's really technical or it's not really technical. If you want me to do your setup guide, a personalized one that is, just go to my membership options and select the next level tier. And one of those perks is where I can create you a video to get you up and running for whatever your problem is. But until next time, stay retro.